So with this year's pheasants delivered today and in the pen, fields all cut, it's time to get out foxing. Welcome to the shooting show. So I think I'll set up here for a little while or until it gets dark. It's not really ideal, but I've got a feeling that there's a fox using the uh, edge of these fields to um, go through to the valley behind me where the pheasants are. Now, um, because this field's, oh yeah, this bank here is quite steep, there's not really much of an opportunity to sort of sit further back and get shot down to this fence line. The only way I can do it is to actually get quite close to it. But hopefully, if it does come through, I'll see it coming from a bit further up and um, be able to sort of keep still, get on it, and maybe drill it before it gets quite that far. Um, alternatively, it might end up coming through on the bank behind me. So uh, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled and uh, just see if it comes along. So I've also got with me Pulsar XP50. Um, these are really good. This is the uh, the Pro model, the um, the Mark II Helion, if you like, and uh, very very clear. And it's certainly handy for just like right now. It's just getting dark. For just picking out those things that you might not sort of straight away see just with a pair of binoculars. With this, it just jumps straight out at you. So yeah, big um, big advantage. Rabbit there looks like he might have a bit of mixy, poor bugger. He could well be easy pickings for any fox that comes through. There's actually quite a few uh, rabbits along the bottom here. I'd be surprised if there wasn't a fox that um, had this as part of his regular uh, sort of places to check. You usually find that when there's a few rabbits around, the fox will always come past at some point. So I'm quickly losing light here. Um, it's still light enough to shoot using the uh, Element Nexus scope there, but um, 
Oh, it's too dark to film anything, so even if I did shoot anything, you're not going to get it on film. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and swap rifles. I've got um, 243 with me with the uh, Rico infrared Rico thermal uh, scope on it. So um, I'll go and get that, I think, and uh, come out for another look, see. So typically, I've just spotted a fox up there that was up on the bank and uh, I've watched him make his way down and he's dropped down into the valley on the other side of the hill there. So um, I've gone and got the 243 out of the truck. It was just too dark to take a shot with the 260. So I've gone and got the 223, uh, 243. Um, it's got the Rico thermal scope on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly get across this field here and see if I can um, like catch up with it down in the valley. So. Uh, Got to be quick. All right, good, so that's a little vixen, and um, it's hit her just there. So maybe a fraction lower than what I was uh, intending, but nonetheless it dropped her, so, so great. That's a good start. Have a look around, see if we can find another one. Uh, that fox there was, um, he was doing about 150 metres and uh, he'd obviously got wind of me and um, was heading off down the down the hill there but uh, he made a mistake of stopping sitting down and that was his lot so I walk down and have a look and uh, see whether it's a dog or a vixen. There we go, and that is a little vixen. Good fox that. So over the past month or so that I've been using the Rico scope, I've been very impressed with it and it's proved very effective on local fox population. So I've no doubt that over the coming episodes, using the new infrared TL35 tube scope, um, I'm going to have a lot of success with this as well. This is a very nice looking scope. It's basically, uh, it looks a lot like a day scope. Uh, it's very easy to use. I've taken it out of zero, it and so far I've been very impressed with it. So look out for this uh, in future episodes that are coming up on the shooting show. And remember, if you're not already a member of Basque, it's time to join. Thanks for watching.